Hey, what's going on guys? My name is George and this is SaaS Master. Today we're gonna check out WP Cost Estimation and Payment Form Builder. It's one of my new favorite plugins that I really wanna recommend to you. If you guys wanna grab the deal that's going on, check out the link in the description. Now what this does, it lets you create estimator forms that look super nice. Let me give you a quick example of one of the ones I created for my website development. This is in Spanish, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to build one in a bit from scratch. Now, for example, what I do with my clients is I send them this link and they can estimate the cost of the website they want. So for example, they can choose it, they look really nice, and you can do a whole lot with them. So they can select what they want, and as they select, you can see the price gauge move up or down. So this way, it's a clear message of what you're gonna be able to get when you estimate the website in this case. Um, something that I recommend also is like physically, when you visit a client, you can do this physically with them. Just open this page and do it along with them. So they actually know what they are getting. And if they add something, it adds a cost to it. So they can actually visually see that. So it's a really cool plugin that you can use. And I really recommend it. Now, it's, it's not just about estimator you could do a whole bunch of things with it forms bookings um, you can make for example if you're selling health products this could be a health estimator so this could be like for example instead of these pictures it could be like the body right so it could be like a body of a skinny person of a overweight person and based on the end results you can like provide them hey you should buy this product right or um, you need this or that so it gives you the result so it's pretty cool that you can do that with this form now to head over to the fun part how to build your estimator form. So the first thing you would have to do is head on over to plugins, add new and install your brand new plugin. Once you install it, you will get a brand new menu right here, which is the EMP form builder. Now, the cool part about this is that when you start, it comes with pre-built templates. So if you saw something that you liked on the live preview, well, you can use it right here. And you could view these right here if there's something that you like, and there's so many things that you could do with it, like the form I showed you already, or something like this. Let me show you a preview of this. Maybe you like it and you wanna customize it a bit more. So for example, we got a menu right here for the dates. We got simple beds, double beds, TV, balcony. Um, you get a summary on the bottom or you can have different type of things. So there's a lot of things you can do. Now let me show you how to build a form from scratch. So let's add a brand new form right here. And I'm going to show you how the menus work, how, what you can do. So at the end, when you see this video, you would be making your own forms in a breeze. So the first thing I'm going to show you before we actually view the, let me just add a step right here. What you're going to see before we actually see the, the builder right here, the visual builder is the general options in the bottom. So I would suggest that you start off from here. So for example, it's a title order of reference prefix. So for example, the forms, um, if you put 100, the next one will be 101 and then jump 102, 103 or uh, ABC 100 and it'll jump to the next one, so on and so forth. You can get at your Google Anal Analytics ID, Google Maps browser key, if that's something you need in your browser. If you're using the distance calculation, so it's route direct, progress bar, it's gonna be a price, a step number, all steps or no progress bar, you can remove it if you like the type of currency signal is it going to be you know, euros pounds um, dollars you can set the currency right here currency position left and a little bit of more advanced options like ajax and some custom js for the form initial price so for example if you want to start off with an initial price you can do that there or an initial price when they select the product the price starts up from there so that's possible maximum progress bar price so let's just say the maximum price of a product that you are doing in your form is about i don't know five thousand dollars so you would set five thousand as a maximum price right so let's just set that do you want to hide the initial price in the progress bar if you want to do that so it, only at the end you see the price maybe you want people to go through all the steps and then get the price or maybe you just want to see as they go along how the price reflects on each movement High tooltip on touch devices, automatic next step. So when they click something and if there's no other option, it'll just go to the next step. Uh, date picker language, you can select the language right here. All these languages are available. You have the use 12 hours time form or if you remove it, it's a 24 hours time form. Decimal separator, separators and just general things. Next, let's head over to text. This is, I think, a really awesome feature because all of this can be translated. So if you want to create a Spanish, a, I don't know, 
a German language or whatever, you just replace these. It tells you what it is. So for example, this is the invoice. Instead of invoice, you want to say uh, quote or something in Spanish or English. I mean, just whatever language you want, it's possible right here. Just replace these. Um, enable introduction, yes or no. So for example, when you start off a new form, it starts off with a button and it says, you know, get started. If it's removed, it'll just jump to the, to the start of the simulator for the quote. Next thing we have is the email settings. So you can set your email settings that when they're sent, they send these right here. And you can add all these right here. And you can also add your mailing list. They got MailChimp, MailPoet, GetResponse, and contact as soon as the email field is done. Last step. Okay. So when the form is finished from the flow that you built up here, so you got all the flow that we're going to see in a bit. This is the last step. So for example, open at the end page if you want get values as get variables, conditions on redirect if you want to redirect, delay before the redirection, use signature if you want people to sign, hide final price, use recaptchas and email automatically, download order as a PDF, that's a really important one, um, legal notice, that's the important one also, and you have the Zapier send values. So with Zapier, you can actually send this form to anywhere that you want connecting it and the fields that you're going to use at the end. So for example, by default, you have enter your email and a message. Maybe you want to know their name, their last name. Um, in my case, where I built a, a website estimator, I asked also, what would you like your domain to be? That's just a little things that you might want to know uh, when you onboard a client. So you can add these right here and edit it if you want them. Let's head over to payment. You can also use payment gateways right here. So you got PayPal, Stripe and Razorpay. Summary, you can set what you want to activate or deactivate here in the summary. If you want to create discount coupon codes, so for example, we can add a coupon right here. GDPR, if you want to add your own compliance and design. By default, the design are these colors and you're going to have this option and a visual designer that we're also going to see. Now, let's get over to the fun part, how to build your form on the visual way. So I added this step. Let's add another step right here. And let's drag it over here on the top. And what we're going to do first off is we're going to select this as a flag. The flag is like, I'm the flag. I'm the one that's going to start. So this is going to be my first step. So I'm going to flag it. So everything's going to be based up from here. Now let's edit this step. So I'm going to click that little pencil button and this is going to be start. You can add the maximum items per row description. If you want to add a description, this is the starter form. Okay. Show it depending on the condition. So only if a condition is met, it can show. What is a condition? Condition is basically if this happens, do this. So if someone selects this, do that. That's how it would work. Selection required. Do you want to have a selection required? Yes. In this case, it's a first step. Obviously, we want them to select something. Show an email summary. So that means it's going to show at the end and at the email. Hide the next step button if that's something you want to do. And let's add an item right here. So in this case, we're going to say website. So let's add a website. And this is in the step category. I can add it somewhere else if I want just by moving it here. What is this going to be? It's going to be an image type. Or do you want a button, a check field, all of these? For this case and purpose, it's going to be an image type. We can add a small description. This is for websites. Um, you can add notes, group name. If you add these to a group, they can select one or the other. Let's select an image right here. Let me see if I have something already preloaded so we don't take longer. Just anything for this case and purpose. No, let's actually load something from the computer. So let's drag something in. Let's drag this right here. Hold on. So let's wait for these to upload. And once it's uploaded, we're going to select one of them to activate it. So give me a second. All right. Now that we have them loaded, we're going to show one of them in this case, and we're going to insert into form. Okay, so now that we loaded that one is just for this testing purposes, uh, we can tint the image. What that means, it's going to set a color to it. So if it's selected, it's going to turn into uh, pink, blue, green, 
So that's a pretty nice option if you want to use that. Uh, shadow effect, open URL on a click. So if you want to set an URL for that, calling method, um, there's so many things. A price for this one. So a base price, um, whatever you want to set it for, whatever your product is going to be, just set it right here. For example, the base price for this one is, I don't know, $200. Is it going to be a price calculation? A price calculation lets you set values for this with more advanced values. You can add a value, a condition to that value, a distance if that's going to be something that you're going to do, or a date difference. Operator, there's going to be a plus. So it's going to add if they add more. In this case, it's just one product for that. Uh, don't add price to to total if you want. Is selected is hidden what this means is selected it means it's, it's already selected by default so once you start off that's the first thing that's selected so let's not use that is it hidden you can hide it if you want to use it for other purposes at the end you can like uh, let's just say that's something that has to be added and you don't want to show it in the form you can hide it is required so they have to add it to like selected show an email summary so that means at the end and hide price summary hide quantity in summary hide summary if zero price or enable quantity choice. So that means they can select the quantity choice if they, they if it's if this is something that they can select more. So for example, I need five websites then, or up to, they can select up to one, 100. You can set that also. I'm gonna disable that and modify variable if you want. So let's save this one right here. All right, now it's showing. Let's add another value. This is gonna be a, uh, sales website and the sales website is going to start off from $500 and we're just going to add the image and we're going to head through because all the rest are just variables that you would have to customize for your case and purpose. In this case, we're going to select something from the media library. Okay. And let's just insert into post, save it. And now we have two sections. Now let's close this. Let's connect this right here. So let's use this little link connected to that already. And let's just kind of preview it, see how it's going. Basically, we just created the first step only. So let's see how that is viewing and then we can continue. All right. So this is the first thing. Remember, we created this one, the website and we added the description now you can see it's kind of grayed out and you can't view it we can edit that in the general colors or we can edit that in the visual settings so let's just say select this one remember we set it to 200 dollars. well that's one set and this one is oops 500 dollars. now i can set the variable to select one or the other so that's possible there if we group it so they can only select one and they are forced to select one of them okay let's move forward and let's head over to the next step. So let's actually create two steps right here. Once you see this, you're going to see the, the power of it and how easy it is to build. Okay, now we have two steps. Let's link it again. Use our link and connect. Now we have these little pencils here. What do those mean? Well, we can set the condition for it. So let's hit this little pencil. And what you see right here visually is that my step jumps to this step. So let's add a condition. So if a condition is met, so I'm going to select if website is selected right here, you could use selected, unselected, uh, if the price is superior to this. So for example, if it's a high end product, you could send them to another section of the step. In this case, we're going to do something simple. If that's, if this is selected, it's going to jump to there. All right. So let's save that. And we're going to do the same with this step. But with this step, we're going to set a different section. So instead of selecting website, it's going to be sales website. So if they select a sales website, it's going to go to a different flow. So let's save that flow right here. And now we set our first conditions. So it's super easy. Now we can continue with our form builder. All right. And now we have the conditions met. So let's click on the pencil to create steps in here. So let's create in this form and you can call this something else like uh, website add-ons. Okay. And like you said, you can call it whatever you want description if we want to add that. So let's save and let's add a new item. In this case, we're just going to call it in test. Whoops. 
test and it's going to be a button in this case and you're going to the settings change as you can see so let's just try to save these let's create a couple of them with different settings just so you can see how they're going to view and you're going to use to your liking let's add another one and in this one is going to be a color picker at checkbox and this is test two let's save that and just add one more for fun test three and let's select uh, let's see it could be a text field an numeric field rich let me see something interesting a, a date picker would be okay so let's save that and now we have three of them now uh, bear in mind these are just for testing purposes we didn't even add a a numeric count to it so it's not gonna if we select it it's not gonna add any money to it so let's let me add one over here in the bottom steps and this is for cell site save that I just want to show you that the builder goes to different sections and let's add a brand new section this one is just gonna be a checkbox and this is test five it's going to be a switch box or a check box. Let's have a switch box. It looks much nicer. And this one, we, we will add 100. So let's save that. All right. So let's click X. Now we have a variable. So let's view this form in a live preview. Okay. So for example, if I select website and I hit next step, it should go to my website add-ons. Now we added three different ones. So there's a test one, there's a check field right here, and we have a calendar selected. Okay, and let's select this. Let's add that and go to next step. And it goes to our final cost right here. Now you don't see the estimator form because we didn't activate it, but if we activate it, you can view that. So that's the end price. You can enter your email and message. Like I said, you can add more fields if you want. Now let's refresh this test one. Remember we had two website add-ons. What happens if now we go to sales website? So let's go to next step. And now we head to the sales site. So we went to a different section now. Did you see how this visual flow builder went to a different section? Well, you can add more of these and just go step by step. It could be like add-ons. It could be other things like choose your hosting. And we could just start linking one to the other, one to the other. And for example, let's just say it separates here, but at the end, we join to that that one because at the end of the day, it's gonna be like the same, same settings after that. So that is possible. And you can do a whole bunch of things with it. So it's a really powerful estimator form builder. Now for the visual part of the plugin. So like I said before, you can head on over to design and we can change the colors. Remember we saw some of the gray that's kind of not visible with gray with gray. So you could change this right here, secondary color, select the switch box, and you can just edit this as you'd like. You also have a custom CSS if you want to customize this even more. Now we can head over to the form designer. Let's click there. So we actually can edit in a visual way. So in this case, if we want to independently select colors for different sections, that is possible here. So for example, the first thing that we're gonna do in this visual designer is this. So we can click select an element and we can select independent these from the others. So let's just say we had two titles. We can put one title in like green and the other one in red if we want independent. But we're just gonna select this right here and we don't wanna move the color for the title in every single step. We just wanna do it here. So that is possible by heading over to the style of this step. So you can set the background, the borders, the margins, shadows, just whatever you want to edit right here. Let's just change this color to pink, for example, just set okay. Um, you can set the size, positions, paddings, all you can do with the visual builder right here. And like I said, this can be uh, independent step by step. So if I wanna edit something here, I would just apply the setting that I did right here, select another element, so now it could be a this element and we can change the style for this element independently. So it's a pretty cool thing that we have this visual editor also in the plugin. There you go, guys. It's super easy to build. And 
If you guys want to grab the deal that's going on, check out the link in the description. Thank you for watching. My name is George and this is SaaS Master. I'll see you guys later.